My guest today is Sandra Bellamy, who's an asexual person who has her own show where she helps other asexuals with love, life, confidence, dating, and relationships so they can truly live a fulfilled life. In today's episode, Sandra talks to us about what it means to be asexual in a world that constantly promotes sex. Welcome to Lifeology. Hello, James. It's lovely to see you. It is nice to meet you again. I, you, I actually met you through um, Blue Talks, which is with my friend Corey Poirier. So anyone who has wants to do a TED Talk that has been turned down or wants to do it, simply go to bluetalks.com and tell them I sent you there, James Miller, with Lifeology. So Sandra, you were actually in one of the pitch sessions that was uh, the individuals that were working with Corey who pit, were able to pitch yourself to me and to other um, show hosts as well. So thank you. It was really nice to meet you. Well, when you That's pitched right. us, it was interesting. You, um, you started talking about asexuality. And... You know, I have an idea what that means, but when you started to talk more about it, I realized I really don't have any idea of what that means to be asexual. What does that mean? Okay, so asexuality is a sexual orientation that's based on the lack of sexual attraction. So to put it in context for me personally, it means I don't get the need, urge or want for partnered sexual intercourse. So I don't look at a guy and think, I want sex with you. It, my brain's not wired that way and even if i have other attractions for guys like aesthetic attraction romantic attraction i'm kissing it doesn't make me want sex interesting okay now that's something where a lot of times people are there's a lot of misnomers and really rude concepts about that sometimes people say and, and i say this what i've heard and what i've worked with before which is i don't think this is true at all a lot of times people will say if someone's asexual is because no one wants to have sex with them or they have fear that they that they would perform well how do you dispel that because one stuff that that's very disrespectful but when have you ever heard something like that before yeah i mean i'm an asexual that's had sex in the past so that mm -hmm. might be very interesting for your listeners. That would be interesting. <laughs> and some people think someone's asexual just because they haven't had sex or they can't get sex or they haven't had good sex. I've had good sex mm -hmm. and bad sex in the past mm -hmm. before yeah. I realized I'm asexual. And I would like it to be taken seriously that some people just don't get the one urge or need for partnered sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. And the lack mm -hmm. of sexual attraction is not the same as a lack of action. So some asexual mm. participate in sex, some like me who's sex repulsed these days do not. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very dismissive when people say it stuff is. like that. And they just yeah. don't understand. It's not. It's not trauma based. So I've, I have had sexual trauma. I'll be honest with you. Uh -huh. But I've sure. had sex after the sexual trauma. So it didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm. I'm not that bothered about it. I don't want to say minimize other people's experience, sure. but yeah, I just put yeah. it down to a bad incident in my life and moved on with yeah. my life. So. Sure. Um, I, you know, if I wanted to have sex, I would, but I just really don't want it. I'm into kissing. Sure. Big time. Sure. sure. Yeah, in the um, in the LGBT, LGBTQIA, that A stands for asexual. Um, when you were growing up, when did you did you have did you feel different from the other children your age when it comes to them talking about uh, sex and all that as well? Well, I thought I was heterosexual for years, and I had my first heterosexual boyfriend at six years old. But oh, at that time. <laughs> Yeah, it's really young. At that time, looking back now, I can understand that I was always asexual, born asexual, but didn't uh, realise it. So uh, at six years old, uh, my boyfriend at the time was kissing me passionately. He was the same age as me. And um, he wanted to do what people would call a sexual exploration. But for me, I mm -hmm. felt very invaded. I lacked self-love mm. back then. So I let him do that. And I felt guilty for years sure. and really bad. And then um, at 15, something happened, which was one of those bad incidents I spoke about. Yeah. And the guy opened a drawer and showed me a condom. And I'm just like, that's nice, because I thought it was a nice yeah. object for him to yeah. have. I didn't associate yeah, exactly. with me, didn't think about having yeah. sex with him. And then he tried to have sex against my will, basically. Mm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So that wasn't good. I got out of it by physically stopping him. Sure, but, you yeah. know, I never thought about sex. And 16, mm -hmm. I was pressurized into having sex and I did yeah. it to keep my that boyfriend. So so when I was doing it, it was kind of all for the wrong reasons and not because mm -hmm. I really wanted to, not because I was sure. really into it. And when my boyfriend, like my last long term boyfriend, when he wanted to have sex with me, he would come up behind me when I was washing up touch me and then try to instigate sex and mm, i yeah. was rather interested in the washing up more than that yeah. and i hate washing up so you can tell <laughs> that my brain is just not wired that way i really appreciate you saying the difference between you know the 
being asexual and heterosexual, because we know there's many different types of sexuality. So I really appreciate the fact that you normalize that because for some people they think asexual, uh, then they think, you know, there's no, no attraction at all, which we know there are some specifics that are, but to hear that you would prefer, it sounds like if you were to have it, that'd be um, heterosexual as well. I, I really appreciate once again, the distinction between that, because it is important to know that it is a specific sexuality as well. And I don't think a lot of people understand that asexual, asexuality is that, that specific um, sexual orientation. Yeah. What are the different types of sub subtypes of an asexual person? So I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible for your <laughs> listeners. Sure. There's two main categories of asexuals, if you like, the pure asexuals that don't experience any sexual attraction whatsoever. So they're like mm -hmm. me. They don't look at someone and think, I want sex with you. And mm -hmm. then um, and then they're the great asexuals. So the great asexuals only experience sexual attraction in the limited, rare or specific circumstances or they experience it, but not enough to want to act on it. And okay. in these two categories the pure asexuals and the gray asexuals, there's loads of subcategories okay, of asexuals, okay. including on the gray asexual end of the spectrum, something called demisexuals who can only experience a sexual attraction when a deep emotional bond has been formed is usually maintained and sustained. So they have to have the bond before they can experience sexual attraction, which is different to a heterosexual, for example, mm -hmm. who might have that as their preference. They might want the emotional connection sure. versus a preference because asexuality isn't a preference and it isn't mm -hmm. a choice, yeah. which is an important distinction to make. I, I appreciate that. Just like being gay or homosexual, that is, that is not a choice as well. That That is something where it, it is interesting. Um, I'm sure many people who are asexual don't know that they are. I don't, haven't put a name to it. I, I'm sure the F can feel very lonely and very um, isolating at times. What are, what is specific, or how did you specifically, once you realize it, what, what did you do to help you to understand more about who and what you are? So I found out I'm asexual, shockingly, through an NHS counselor in the UK telling me that I would have to have sex in order to keep a good guy. I was oh absolutely horrified. I told yes. this counsellor that I don't want oh. sex. The expectation of sex at the end of the night was of a date was making me almost wet myself. Mm -hmm. And that's how bad it felt. And it got to the stage where I thought I wouldn't be able to date anymore, ever have a relationship. So I was going to be alone. So then I told the counsellor my thoughts and feelings that I only like romance and kissing. And that's when she said she was worried about me because I'd have to have sex in oh. order to keep a good guy. I was horrified and that forced me, if you like, pushed me, everything happens for a reason, into yes. the fact that I went home and Googled I love kissing but not sex and they came to mm. asexuality.org, which is the biggest online forum for asexuals. So I joined that. Then I went on asexualytic.com, which is a dating website, joined that. And then I joined Facebook groups for asexuals. And I run six of my own Facebook groups for asexuals, wow. three of which that's are amazing. dating. Yeah. So that's what I did to help myself and organize asexual yeah. meetups as well in person. That's fantastic. You know, it's, I, I'm sure, because I, I, I was thinking about this before the show and, and I was like, well, does she go on dates, et cetera? So, I mean, to hear that, yes, you can, of course you can date. And I, I said that out of ignorance, not of, of anything else, but, um, but so I'm glad you're teaching me about this as well. So to have, to, to realize that you know, okay, so you can go on dates and this farther is the furthest you would go is kissing for different people. It's different things. How do they, as a scientist in me, the behavioral scientist, how do you measure or quantify a deep emotional connection? Is it something that the person would feel? I mean, I like to look at metrics and ways to measure things. And if you can't, you can't, which I, I think it'd be hard to measure. Are there specific ways in which people know? I, I'm just saying this more from a curious standpoint, not from, not from anything else. Well, how, how, how about you said about romantic attraction was your question? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the, sure. So the aspect, you were talking about the, the demisexuals, uh, they have to have a deep connection. And so there are different aspects of asexual people. Like for you, you, you go as far as kissing. Oh, Everyone has yes. their different version of, of uh, yeah. what that is. Okay. How are they able to measure that within themselves to say, this means, this is what a deep connection means. This kissing, I know that's as far as right. I go. Does everyone have their own okay. specific um, limitation? I don't say limitations, um, guidelines. 
for every asexual is different and i should say there's mm -hmm. different types of asexual so i'm a heteromantic just attracted to guys romantically oh, okay. you can get biromantics attracted to two genders uh -huh. romantically panromantic attracted to multiple mm -hmm. genders romantically mm -hmm. and so for asexuals usually we we love through a deep emotional connection rather than gotcha. physical so that's okay. our main way we love and we can have different degrees of physicality for me i absolutely love kissing i'm a hyper romantic and a hyper kisser which is very rare for the world population let alone mm -hmm. asexual so a lot of asexuals yeah. they prefer cuddling to kissing the majority and some of them might you know some of them are touch adverse as well they don't like any touching but more gray asexual so they're on the more sexual end of the asexual spectrum they're the ones that would tend to be more sex positive and maybe engage in sexual activity and some of them don't mind it and some of them enjoy it as an activity to do so the emotional connection is usually a lot of the time through talking and having shared hobbies and mm -hmm. interests and commonalities and communication those really good things and then the physicality for asexuals is more like they're doing it as a way of physically connecting to a heterosexual partner or it mm -hmm. could be you know someone who's gay or lesbian sure, yeah. and yeah. you can be any gender by the way if you're asexual there's no there's no gender limit as well because some people mix asexuality up with gender they mix asexuality mm, with yeah. celibacy it's not the same as celibacy i'm not abstaining i don't get those sexual urges so when i'm on a date the guy's like i'm kissing him last day oh well it wasn't a date i met a guy in a club i was kissing him for over four hours which is a heck of a lot <laughs> and he's so like good for you. he's like <laughs> and he's like why what are you doing to, to hold the feelings in like how are you controlling yourself i don't have anything to control yeah. so yeah. i'm not restricting myself like celibates restrict themselves like yeah stop the sure. urges or they stop themselves yeah. from doing stuff does that answer your question yes it does thank you so much i am um, i'm totally blown away i mean I, as i said i knew some of these things but there's there's a whole other world out there i mean i'm i'm, I'm ignorant in so many things and so i know my viewers and listeners right now are like oh my gosh because it, it's it's so important that everyone knows that not everybody fits in the same category same box as everybody else just because we may the gender may look the same or or, or sexuality may look the same you know it, it doesn't mean that everyone has the same desires. And so to hear that there's a whole other wonderful group of wonderful people out there who have their own interests, their own desires, their own likes, dislikes, and emotional connections. I think it's, I think it's wonderful and inspiring to hear. Now you were saying that you, um, for the dating websites, how, how does an asexual go about dating? This is really difficult. So uh, I'm on, uh, for example, at the moment when I'm talking to you, I'm on Facebook dating and Badoo dot com mm -hmm. so badoo's got an actual category for asexuals but you cannot filter by asexual which is really bad oh, so you can't look for other asexuals yeah. so i've only come across um eight people so far on the asexual spectrum most of which are on the more sexual end of the spectrum so mm -hmm. a lot of them still want to participate in sex for example Mm -hmm. um and so an asexual can go on there but i'd recommend to write in your bio that you're asexual but a lot of the time they ignore it heterosexuals ignore mm. the fact you write in your bio you're asexual or they don't even see it i get loads of guys liking yeah. me loads of guys in my inbox wanting sex with me and loads of guys they just don't read my bio they're in a conversation and yeah. they'll ask me questions that i've already answered in the bio i'm like well you didn't read my bio then and so I put up front who I am, you know, like about that I'm asexual, not interested in sex. I personally don't want marriage. I don't want kids. I like living separately, mm -hmm. even in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm very crystal clear. Uh, but, you know, then you have to take into account the fact that a lot of them don't read it. A lot of them are looking for hookups. So a lot yeah. of the time it's not so suitable. So trying to find groups like meetup.com, they have some asexual groups or just general activity groups like artwork or singing or reading books. Some mm -hmm. of those clubs can be better for asexuals to be on than traditional dating sites because most people on dating sites want sex. I've been searching for the right guy since yeah. 2014. We're now in 2023. <laughs> so yes. I haven't found the right guy for me yet. Um, yeah. But there are yeah. a couple of asexual couples I know that are married, one of whom found oh, their partner at asexual meetup. So you can, asexuals can marry other asexuals as well as they, some of them marry, you know, sexuals, if you like. Sure. Yeah. Uh, having to weed through all the nonsense, how do you keep up your positivity and your optimism when it comes to dating? 
I love being asexual, so I have to say that. So I think okay. every opportunity <laughs> to educate people about asexuality, yes. even on a dating app, is really good. Um, it is difficult, but I believe my asexual soulmate's out there somewhere. And so yes. I'm kind of very spiritual. And so I, cool. I believe my soulmate's Indian for from a past life and so okay, it's right. driven it's driven me to do things i wouldn't usually do and get out of my comfort zone yeah. so i've been to bollywood events like dance parties in my uh -huh. city for example um and i approached lots of indian guys online i have had dates so i've been on dates but it's very difficult because they've lied to me they've said they're all right about my mm. asexuality then they've said when I've met them, well, one guy said, oh, well, my family wouldn't actually approve of you being asexual and my community wouldn't have approved. So they don't want to be seen with an asexual girl is dreadful. And because I'm quite famous in the asexual community, they, if they're yeah, if it's okay. an asexual guy, a lot of the time they don't they're not out about being asexual. So they don't want to be seen oh, public with an asexual girl because they want to keep it quiet. So but I just really I but yeah yeah they're not out they a lot of them are underground if you like like they don't come out as asexual they don't want people to know because yeah. they fear well, ridicule. Well, yeah walk me through that yeah walk me through that because i mean i i can understand you know if people are coming out as being gay i can understand you know some of that but walk me through the aspects of the, the shame or the i'm using the word shame i don't know if that would be appropriate but the reasons why they someone would not want to come out like that yeah so some people get told it's unnatural to be asexual there's something mm. mentally wrong with them there's something physically wrong with them you just haven't had sex with the right person yet try me like when are you going to get oh. a boyfriend when are you going to give me children or get a girlfriend or get oh. a partner and so there's lots of societal expectations lots of family expectations yeah. and if you're not the normal heterosexual person i say normal because nothing's yeah. really normal you can be sure, your beautiful yeah. unique self then you know people like families can turn against some of them like because they don't understand it they're uncomfortable with it and and some people frown upon them thinking you know i i just don't understand you so they'll try and fix the asexual thinking there's something wrong with mm. us and sometimes if they've got sexual friends that talk a lot about sex they'll feel like left out in those conversations and they feel that if they admit the truth of who they are then their friends will leave them and some do some when they find out they're asexual really? some people leave them yeah it's dreadful I, I find, you know yeah it is I, it's yeah i mean i i guess i I don't know. I, I, it surprises me, and I'm once again I say this in a vacuum because I, I don't live their life. But, but it, I, I don't understand why I would not be friends with someone who's asexual. What does that have to do with me? I, I don't understand. I just don't understand that. You know? Yeah, they they're so uncomfortable with what's different to them, I guess, and they fear yeah, it. Sure. That they just they don't relate to it and they think you're weird or something but yeah. I, I i'm i love being different so i'm okay with you weird should, if they yes, want to call me that yes, anyway. ex yeah you know it's it, i i really appreciate you once again being on the show because you are uh, demystifying and debunking a lot of different myths about individuals and so you know i as i as i said i, I know many people don't know what it means to be asexual and that there's it is a sexual orientation it's not a choice it's how, how you're born but what would you say for those individuals who maybe are listening now and they probably have their own, huh, that sounds familiar to me. What, what advice would you give them? Come and see me, <laughs> contact me. <laughs> but, um, but also I, I would say, um, come to terms with it yourself. So it took me about mm -hmm. three weeks to come to terms with my own asexuality. Yeah. Um, it's good to, to look at forums and different groups and things and try and find out like as much information about asexuality as you can, the different types of asexual to see where you fit in, because this yeah. will give you a sense of place more within the community. You don't, you know, you don't have to label yourself. You can just be curious mm -hmm. and think I'm learning about this, but the sooner you learn about how you are in terms of asexuality, the better because you'll be stronger to talk to other people. So when I first yeah. found out as asexual, I was very weak. It took me about three weeks to research it fully. And so the first people I told, if you like, well, the first person I told, other than my parents when I was walking home, the person's like, oh, but you're always talking about guys. You love guys, you know, and she didn't mm. believe me, but I was weak. I said, I think I'm asexual. So if someone is just coming to asexuality, the best thing to do is to read up about it, try and discover what type of asexuality asexual you might be so that you can feel stronger talk to the people who you trust like the friends that are not going to mock you or ridicule you for not liking sex mm -hmm. and join some groups and things like that so that you can become stronger 
when you come out to other people and sit down and have a proper conversation just say you know mm. I, if you don't like sex just say you know i don't feel the same way as other people i don't mm -hmm. like sex i'm not into it yeah. so i think it's all about researching understanding yourself learning about it and accepting you're beautiful even if you're asexual because you're different and difference beautiful we don't yeah. all want to be the same Certainly in the is. world yeah exactly yeah i think that's important when you can put a name to something or a label to something it it takes away the power of of how great this, this this quote struggle is and so i really appreciate you saying that as far as having people research because once they can put a name to it kind of figure out the, maybe the different category or subcategories that they are i'm sure that makes a lot more sense to people now you were talking about the different forums that you're a part of are there i'm assuming they're, they're global they're national they're international forums as well yeah. that many people can find support yeah, asexuality.org, which I don't own. It's got nothing to do with me other than oh, I, sure. I'm on there. Um, that's the biggest like, online forum for asexuals. And David mm -hmm. J founded that. Um, so that's where it all kind of started online. And then yeah. people can buy books on Amazon of asexuality. They can join groups on Facebook and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I, I have six groups and I'm active in those groups. We talk a lot in my groups about hobbies and interests. So it's not just all about asexuality. I share my videos in there to educate them mm -hmm. about, you know, growing in confidence, dating relationships, love, self-love I'm big on as well. Mm -hmm. So we talk about a lot of, of hobbies and interests, share photographs and stuff like that. So it's very much like not talking about sex a lot of the time, do you know what yeah. I mean? Because we're talking about sure. other things, but it provides a sense of community, a sense of belonging, a sense of being part of something bigger than you are and, and knowing that other mm -hmm. people around you who care about you understand you. And so I'd really urge people to get into those groups. Some people aren't on Facebook, yeah. so there's groups on Discord, Reddit have subreddits and stuff on mm -hmm. asexuality. Obviously YouTube channels, you've been part of a YouTube community. So I'd really say reach out, be part of an online community because some people don't see asexuals in real life, if you like. It's very hard sure. to come. I was kind of spread all around. But all these things are universal. You can, you know, all the groups and forums and stuff, you can get them all around the world. You just type in Facebook, like asexual groups, and a load should pop up and some will be mm -hmm. relevant to your specific area and others will just be global. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I mean, that's great information for, for everyone to have. I guess I, I, I'm coming back to the whole... In my own life, I mean, I've, I've had some, we've all had struggles, but I'm still kind of flabbergasted. And I once again, I say this in a vacuum that people would be upset or disown a friend or a, a family member because they're asexual. I, I don't, I don't, under, it just blows my mind. I mean, I know what happens. And once again, I say this, I say this out of ignorance because it happens, has happened to many people, but I'm hopeful that my viewers and listeners who are listening, that that is not something you would do because once again, it has nothing to do with you. And we're all fearfully and wonderfully made. We all have great, wonderful opportunities in life. We have so many things going for us. And so hopefully to hear that someone else's sexual, sexual identity is different than yours does not mean that they're any different than you. So our, yeah. we're wrapping up here, Sandra Bellamy. It has been an absolute pleasure having you on my show. You have so much information. I uh, definitely want my viewers and listeners to go to your Facebook groups, and which you can feel free to give. Um, is there anything else you may have? I know they can find on your website. So where will they find all this information online? Yeah, so asexualized.com is my website. And asexualized, my sexual life is my main YouTube channel. And they can contact me asexualized at gmail.com. And then on Facebook, the best one to do is probably find asexual friends, first of all. But I also have um, asexual no sex dating group and things like that as well. But asexual friends, they could come through first. So yeah. Wonderful. Just okay. My viewers, my viewers and listeners also know that if you can't find this information in any other place, simply go to the show notes at jamesmillerlifeology.com. I'll have Sandra's information there. All of the, uh, the Facebook groups, the YouTube, everything else will be packaged in that show notes. So if you have any questions, feel free once again to go to jamesmillerlifeology.com and I'll have all, those, all the information there for you. Sandra, thank you so much for a wonderful guest. I truly appreciate your conversation, your insight, your wisdom. It was very insightful for me. So thank you. Thank you so much.